Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and back to this series on the restoration of a Medico Guardsman for my buddy Johnny Ford. Uh, so when last we left off we had reinstalled this guy and epoxied it in place and that all seems to be great. I trimmed this down a bit because it was a bit long and uh, you know made sure to chamfer the edges and all that. And we've got this fitting very nicely, nice tight fit flushes up perfectly so no no issues there very happy with that uh, one point I wanted to make about this is if you have this sort of pipe and you find that your stem is loose you know the idea of this uh, space here I don't know if this was the original intent or not but it does allow you to flex this aluminum a bit and that's great because you can spread these out a bit and, and get the stem to fit properly however uh, what happened with the original was that somebody uh, probably took something like a pair of needle nose pliers and grabbed this and bent it and it wound up cracking and coming off and you know obviously you want to avoid that if you do have a pipe like this uh, and, you, and you need to flare those out take something like this and actually insert it internally and and use that or use a a dowel that you you know sand down to a to a point something like that something conical that will evenly spread these tips and not put too much pressure on uh, the the edge here where you, you you that line where you might get a crack anyway that is ready to go and I'm very happy with it now there's one other thing I did off screen uh, just because it was tedious and I had forgotten to even mention it this point down here this is actually a hole that goes all the way through uh, it wasn't going all the way through it was full of uh, full of tar and cake and whatnot but hopefully you'll be able to see if I bring the flashlight in here uh, maybe not let me let me try turning the lights off there we go so you can see that light there so it does go all the way through in order to, to get that reamed out what I had to do was I took a number 56 drill bit which is very small but it was the appropriate size to get in there put it in uh, this pin vise which oddly enough is holding a pin now and just used it to kind of slowly get in there and, and ream that out uh, reamed out a lot of junk here and then once that was done I got a toothpick with some alcohol and went in and, and scrubbed it as best I could so that is that is good and the reason that's there is the way this pipe works supposedly is that it draws air from beneath and that helps with the burning and, and whatnot uh, don't know if that's true but we'll be able to find well Johnny will be able to find out all right so let me get the mess here out of the way so next steps uh, we're on to cleaning now cleaning and, and, and taking care of the stem so I'm gonna set the stem aside for the for the time being and we will we will get to the stem uh, the cleaning is going to be scrubbing with Mur Murphy's oil soap is what it really comes down to and the, uh, my philosophy is do the dirtiest thing first the thing that is going to make the biggest mess because otherwise you're going to be constantly going back and recleaning stuff you already cleaned and at this point that's right here we've already got the inside of this done and clean the only thing it needs is to be retorted and we'll do that shortly uh, but first we want to get the the cake off of here and it doesn't look too terrible I don't think there's a lot of scorching there but it's just kind of discolored um, there is I just noticed something here oh my I'm gonna have to take a closer look at that there is a hairline crack right there on the edge hopefully you can you can see that it's uh, right in this area here so we're going to need to be careful about that and this might need to get a pipe mud treatment just to a pipe mortar treatment rather just to make sure this doesn't provide a surface for burnout we'll see what that looks like uh, as we go on all right but right now let's uh let's go ahead and get some murphy's oil soap on this this rim and the way i'm going to do that is i've got this container here because i i do tend to double dip a bit and so it's just better to keep a separate container than dipping into the whole bottle. And I'm just going to take on a bent pipe cleaner and glom that up around the, the rim. 
and you want a lot on there. You, you want it to be a pretty heavy, thick coat. Go back for a second load here. And yeah, it's, it's running down inside. That's okay. It's going to be retorted. We'll, we'll get that all cleaned out. Don't worry about it. Um, it goes too deep. We can. All right. So we're going to let that uh, sit now for 20 minutes. And when we, you know, after that 20 minutes, we'll be able to come back to it and we'll scrub it. But we'll let that do its magic and we can turn our attention to the stem and start to talk about that a bit. Uh, sorry, I got Murphy's oil soap on my hand there. All right, so the stem is in not in terrible shape. I mean, it does have some scratches on it that we've we've talked about previously. Just uh, you know, a few little nicks and dings, and they'll sand out quite easily. Uh, we're going to try to avoid sanding around the uh, stamping here because I think that's going to come up really nice when we refill it. The big problem is the button. Uh, does definitely need some work there and we've got this big depression here and that does not go I don't think that's a crack that's not gonna fit I don't think it's a crack um, I mean it seems like there's still plenty of material underneath that so I, I, I don't think there's gonna be any need to fill this but we definitely have to try to lift this with some heat and get it get it flush again so I'm going to do that. I'm going to heat this uh, over the heat gun, and there's no need for you to watch that because uh, it's loud and it's just me holding a stem. And then I'm going to use this in, in here just to kind of help push up from the inside this, this area where the teeth have kind of compressed the vulcanite. Some of it will spring back naturally, but it's also good to have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of help there. And then I'll bring you back. We'll uh, revert over to some files and see what the, how that gets us. Okay, so we heated this and kind of reformed it as best we can. This guy really was a chewer. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to clean that out a bit. And what I'm going to do now is use this file. This is a Nicholson 00, and it's got safe edges. And we're just going to go ahead and use the, um, the back of the button. As a, as a guide, and we're just going to bring this down. And that's going to give us an idea of how deep we need to go. So we've got to take off quite a bit of material here. Let's take a look at the other side. Sorry if I was doing that out of shot there. Okay, so on this one, you know, we're going to get pretty close to flat. Uh, not flat because I'm arcing this, but pretty close to just having a new surface there uh, and a few more strokes. So we're good here. On this side, we got to go quite a bit to fill in that cavern. And we have to make a decision now about whether that's a reasonable thing to do or not. So we'll do a few more strokes. So it's, it's receding, but you can st see there's still this large gap here. I'm afraid that if I go too far down, and I've got this pretty well flattened out, so that's just compressed material that's not coming back. Uh, I don't want to weaken the stem, but at the same time, a patch is going to involve me grinding out material here. so probably worthwhile to keep going and see what happens you know, if we if we cut through we'll patch it we'll have to patch it anyway so let's see sorry I keep drifting out of shot there getting there, but you can see this is still fairly deep. Seems fairly solid. Yeah, there's no soft points around there. Let's see if we can set this up on something.
So we're developing a bit of a step here from the filing. You know, this is this is kind of funny how this is filing. I'm under the impression that this was vulcanite, but you can see the dust is is very black. There's not a lot of evidence of oxidation on this. I'm wondering if this isn't some sort of a plastic. It's not acrylic. I, I don't know. I don't know what they made their stems out of. But this is not filing like vulcanite for sure. Ah, oh, we're pretty close. It may not look it, but we're, we're actually very close to being flat there. Uh, it's still fairly solid. Alright, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to file this. And we will either get this side looking like this side, where, you know, we got a nice smooth surface. Or we will have to grind... Stop. That's my, my uh, timer for the oil soap. Or we will have to grind this out and uh, make a patch. So that would be something different. Let's set it aside and let's go to the oil soap. Or back to the stomach. So I just had to get a toothbrush. So I buy these toothbrushes, uh, I think it's like $10 or $12 for 144 of them and they're they're essentially disposable and therefore I can use them you know I use a different one for every pipe I don't have to worry about any cross contamination uh, so all we're doing now is the the oil soap is still a little bit wet but it's it's it dries it, it does dry and uh, that's what we're expecting uh, we're gonna take some water and I don't normally do this here, so this is going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, complicated to get right here. So we're just going to put some water in this little dish here. You don't need a lot. That's just to moisten the the brush. And I'm not going to do a lot of this here because it's going to make a mess if I do it here. But the idea now is that we're just going to scrub this. And we're going to scrub it every which way. And let's get a paper towel and wipe that off and see how it looks. Yes, yeah, so that's that started us on the way, but. We still got a ways to go. So we're going to repeat that treatment and we're going to keep soaking and scrubbing and I'll actually I'll scrub more vigorously. I was just doing that for the camera until we get down to uh, to the wood here again. You know that's what we're trying to do is get rid of all this lava and, and whatnot that's caked up here. So we're going to do that and then after that I'm going to do the same thing on the sides here. I'm not going to let it sit for 20 minutes but I'm going to cover this in Murphy's oil soap I'm going to get the scrub brush. I'm going to scrub out all those those little nooks and crannies and the rustication, and do that really over the whole stumble, and get it as clean as we can. And then it will be ready for uh, hopefully buffing, but possibly refinishing. We'll just have to see how this looks. Whether or not we have to do any staining. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let me let me work on this, getting this cleaned up on the outside, using the Murphy's oil soap and the the toothbrush as I just showed you. And I'll continue to file this down a bit, and I'll bring you back when uh, we're ready for the next step. All right, so we got the uh, the stumble nice and clean. Uh, we got the top relatively clean. There's a little bit of scorching that we're not going to really be able to do anything about, but uh, it'll polish up nicely. Uh, the rest of the pipe cleaned up very well. Again, I just used the Murphy oil soap and a toothbrush. I did not let the Murphy's oil soap uh, soak in for, for the, the rest of the stumble. I only do that on the rim to kind of break down that uh, cake and lava formation on the top, but for the rest of the pipe it's sufficient to just apply it, scrub it with a toothbrush, and then wipe it off with a damp paper towel. 
Uh, so this is pretty much ready to go. On the stem, I was able to get us down to uh, a point where we really can't see the uh, or much evidence of that big dent. There's a little tiny, tiny uh, divot right there that I'm hoping will sand out as we go along. Uh, I did use this for a while, but I uh, ran into some trouble with the file. Uh, I don't think this is ebonite. I, I think this might be a, a, a nylon, which is much more difficult to work with, but we can, we'll get there. Uh, so what I wound up doing was I switched over to this um, nail board, which is an 80 grit sandpaper essentially, and used that to, uh, to get us to where we need to be. Uh, next steps for this are going to be to switch over to sandpaper. You know, I'll start with 220 grit, and uh, you've seen me do this before. I just will wrap it around a nail board like this to keep it flat, and we'll just go ahead and work that down. I'm going to be judicious about where I sand. I'm going to be really careful not to impact on that um, stamping, and you know get get the nicks out but most of the stem looks pretty good so it, it doesn't really need the 220 sanding except for down here at the the button obviously so we'll get the nicks out and then we'll move to the next uh, grit and we'll do that all the way up to uh, 800 grit before we're ready to buff it but before we do that um, oh two things uh, first off you probably noticed the stem has grown a tenon uh, that's just a dummy tenon that I made out of Delrin, and the reason I did that is when I'm sanding this, I want to be really careful not to round over these corners, uh, these corners right here. And when I have a stem like this, I make a dummy tenon, and then that allows me to insert it into this sanding block that I use. It just has a series of holes in it of various sizes. That gets clamped in the vise, and now I can sand right up to the edge without worrying about going over. Uh, that's a little bit better than putting it back on the pipe and trying to sand and not uh, not sand the stummel. So that's that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, if it was a pipe, if it was a stem that already had a tenon, I wouldn't have to do this. Obviously, I just fit it into one of those holes and and uh, away I go. But before we do any of that work, I'm going to retort the pipe. And it, you, if you haven't seen my retorting video, I'll link to it here and below. Uh, I've got a very extensive video on retorting, so I'm not going to show you any of that except to let you know that what that's going to do is pass um, alcohol vapor, hot alcohol vapor, through the pipe and allow it to clean everything out and then drain back, it condense and then drain back out. And that's going to draw any residual tar out of the briar. It's going to do a real good job of cleaning out the internals. Any of that oil soap that might have dripped down in there will get taken away and obviously it'll clean and sterilize the stem as well. So that's the next step, although we got a little bit of a challenge here because we got this little hole down here. And if I do that, the, the alcohol is just going to come out there. So in order to avoid that, I'm just going to take a regular old uh, round toothpick and I'm going to jam it into that hole as best I can. And that seems like it'll do a fairly good job of plugging that up. If a little bit comes out, it's okay. We haven't haven't put the wax on yet, so it won't be a problem in terms of the finish. All right, so I'm going to retort. I'm going to sand. I'm going to buff and polish, and we will be done. See you soon. Okay, one last point before I uh, finish this up. I've got the stem now sanded and buffed on triple E. And you can see it's, you know, one of the issues with this is I do, I do believe that this is a nylon and it's hard to get this buffed up to the same kind of shine after you sand it as you would get down here where we didn't sand it. So realizing that I, I was a little bit less concerned about getting out small little dents like this. I'll just polish them. Uh, this is about as good as we can do considering the amount of uh, chatter and everything that we had to get rid of. So we'll, you know, we'll get this shined up. It'll, it'll be fine. It's, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close considering where we started. <clears throat> the thing I wanted to bring you back for uh, is, the, is the refilling of the stamping, because I don't think I've shown this before, or if I have, it's been a different method. So uh, I've used uh, various things for this, you know, the tile grout fillers, uh, just these uh, 
china marker pens, white out, all sorts of things. But this product, I, I actually picked this up off of uh, George Debos, one of his videos over at uh, High Grade Pipe Repair. Uh, this stuff works fantastic. So this is called a lacquer stick. It's designed for filling in um, scratches in furniture, I believe. And it's a little hard to get going, but once you kind of get some friction going, this stuff will almost go on like paint. And it's like a solid paint. It's really kind of cool. And you just kind of rub it in. And then you can just wipe away the excess. And you can see what a nice job that's done in terms of filling. So I'll do another coat just to take care of any low-lying spots. And just rub that off. There we go. That's beautifully filled that in. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and buff this with uh, Tripoli, put some Carnuba wax on it. I'll do the same with the stumble. And when I bring you back, we really will be finished. And folks, we have a finished pipe here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Everything is looking good. You know, it's nice and shiny and polished now. The uh, One of the big problems with this was the buildup on the rim. And I think we did a pretty good job of dealing with that. There's still a little bit of scorching, but it's not too bad. You can see the wood grain through that. One problem that I did not address is that there is a small crack um, right in here. Let me get my flashlight so I can point that out a bit better. Right along in there. And I decided, I mean, the only way that I can really fix that is I'd have to grind it out, you know, to get to fresh briar, fill it with something, uh, probably epoxy mixed with briar dust, and then pipe mud everything. And I don't think it's that big of a problem. It doesn't go very far down in the bowl. It doesn't go to the outside. My guess is it's gonna stay like that and I don't think Johnny will have any problems. But of course, if he does, he could always send the pipe back and I can, uh, I can make another video. Uh, the little airway here is clean and open. The carburetor is all cleared out down there in the bottom and the pipe is pretty much ready to smoke. We got the stem fitting nice and tight on that new tenon. <laughs> so tight I can't get it off. Uh, so that new tenon should be just fine. And the stem is cleaned up. Uh, the, only, the only thing I'm disappointed with on the stem, well there's two things. Uh, one is there's that little divot right in there that I could not get out. I, I was afraid to file much further down on this. Um, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but it is what it is. Also, I just could not get this shiny enough. I tried everything. I tried sanding micro mesh pads, uh, lots of buffing, uh, metal polish, all sorts of things, and that's just as shiny as I can get this end of the stem. Uh, so, you know, it's it if it was shiny, it would be not shiny the first few times Johnny smoked it, so I hope he doesn't mind that. But overall, I think we got a very nice uh, result here. Uh, you can see the stampings are still quite clear and intact. Medico Guardsman, imported briar, and we got that nice G that we've been able to restore. So, I hope Johnny enjoys this and gets many years of uh, smoking enjoyment out of it. I'll be getting it in the mail back to him very soon. Hope you enjoyed this, uh, <clears throat> this video series. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I post future videos like this. And I've got some uh, planned very soon. So there, there will be more pipe restoration videos coming in the near future. Thank you all for your time and your support. I greatly appreciate the time you take to watch these videos. And until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.